just how far or how low have we fallen? And just what are we thinking? Did God change his mind? Then how did we get here? Well, someone has to sound the alarm. But can you explain this? This bill would remove the following statutes, trap or targeted regulations of abortion providers, removing language classifying facilities that perform five or more first trimester abortions per month as hospitals, it would repeal Virginia's informed consent mandatory ultrasound and 24-hour delay. It would repeal the requirement that second trimester abortions be performed in a hospital licensed by the State Department of Health. It would repeal the requirement for two additional physicians in cases of third trimester abortions. Delegate Tran. Yes, sir. How late in a pregnancy would your bill apply if a physician was simply willing to certify that, that the uh, continuation of the pregnancy would impair the mental health of, of the woman. How, how late are we talking about? Him? Well, so, so the way the suggestion that we've um, made in the bill is to say it's in the third uh, trimester and at the, you know, with the certification of the physician, so. So how late in the third trimester would you be able to do, to do that? You know, I'm, it's very unfortunate that our, the, our physicians, uh, our witnesses, were not able to attend today to speak specifically. No, no I'm talking that. about your bill. How, yeah, how, late, I mean, how late in the third trimester could a, a physician perform an abortion if he indicated it would impair the mental health of the, of the woman? Or physical health. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm um, talking about the mental health. So, I mean, through the third trimester. The third trimester goes all the way up to 40 weeks. Okay, but to the end of the third trimester. Yep, I don't think we have a limit in the bill. So, um, where it's obvious that a woman is about to give birth, she has physical signs of, that she is about to give birth, would that still be a point at which she could request an abortion if she was so certified? She's dilating. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that would be a, you know, a decision that the doctor, the physician, and the woman. I understand would make that. I'm that asking point. if your bill allows that. My bill would allow that. Yes. But this same woman fought to protect the fall canker worm. How did we get here? Mr. Trump, you're pro life. But I, I want to ask you specifically do you want the court, including the justices that you will name, to overturn Roe v. Wade, which includes, in fact, states a woman's right to abortion? Well, if that would happen, because I am pro life and I will be appointing pro life judges, I would think that that will go back to the individual states. But I'm asking you specifically would you if like to. If they overturned it, it'll go back to the states. But what I'm asking you, sir, is. Do you want to see the court overturn? You just said you want to see the court protect the Second Amendment. Do you want to see the court overturn Roe v. Wade? Well, if we put another two or perhaps three justices on, that's really what's going to be, ha that will happen. And that'll happen automatically, in my opinion, because I am putting pro-life justices on the court. I will say this, it will go back to the states, and the states will then make a determination. Secretary Clinton. Well, I, I strongly support Roe v. Wade, which guarantees a constitutional right to a woman to make the most intimate, most difficult, in many cases, decisions about her health care that uh, one can imagine. And in this case, it's not only about Roe v. Wade. It is about what's happening right now in America. So many states are putting 
very stringent regulations on women that block them from exercising that choice to the extent that they are defunding Planned Parenthood, which of course provides all kinds of cancer screenings and other benefits for uh, women in our country. Donald has said he's in favor of defunding Planned Parenthood. He even supported shutting the government down to defund Planned Parenthood. I will defend Planned Parenthood. I will defend Roe v. Wade, and I will defend women's rights to make their own health care decisions. Secretary and we have come too far to have that turn back now. And in, indeed, he said women should be punished, that there should be some form of punishment uh, for women uh, who obtain abortions. And I could just not be more opposed to that kind of thinking. I, I'm going to give you a chance to respond. But I want to ask you, Secretary Clinton, I want to explore how far you believe the right to abortion goes. You have been quoted as saying that the fetus has no constitutional rights. You also voted against a ban on late-term partial birth abortions. Why? Because Roe v. Wade very clearly sets out that there can be regulations on abortion so long as the life and the health of the mother are taken into account. And when I voted as a senator, I did not think that that was the case. The kinds of cases that fall at the end of pregnancy are often the most heartbreaking, painful decisions for families to make. I have met with women who, have, toward the end of their pregnancy, get the worst news one could get, that their health is in jeopardy if they continue to carry to term, or that something terrible has happened or just been discovered uh, about the... I do not think the United States government should be stepping in and making those most personal of decisions. So you can regulate if you are doing so with the life and the health of the mother taken into account. Mr. Trump, your reaction, and particularly on this issue of late-term partial birth Well, abortion. I think it's terrible. Uh, if you go with what Hillary is saying, in the ninth month, you can take the baby and rip the baby out of the womb of the mother just prior to the birth of the baby. Now, you can say that that's okay, and Hillary can say that that's okay, but it's not okay with me. Because based on what she's saying and based on where she's going and where she's been, you can take the baby and baby out of the womb in the ninth month, on the final day, and that's not acceptable. Well, that is not what happens in these cases. And using that kind of uh, scare rhetoric is just terribly unfortunate. You should meet with some of the women that I've met with, women I've known over the course of my life. This is one of the worst possible choices that any woman and her family has to make. And I do not believe the government should be making it. You know, I've had the great honor of traveling across the world on behalf of our country. I've been to countries where governments either forced women to have abortions like they used to do in China or forced women to bear children like they used to do in Romania. And I can tell you the government has no business in the decisions that women make with their families in accordance with their faith, with medical advice, and I will stand up for that right. All right. But just briefly, I want to move on and to another honestly, segment. honestly, nobody has business doing what I just said, doing that as late as one or two or three or four days prior to birth. Nobody has that. All right. Let's move on.